is a time for South Sudanese that Kenya cannot be the babysitter of this society. It's a time for them to go and build that country. It's time for them to prove to Kenya that they can lead and they can have a sovereign country that they can lead. And I think my job, we are going to make sure that as soon as I become the leader, we will ask them to come home and build. But before we do that, we have to provide security first. We have to provide humanitarian force. We have to provide education where they can go to school. We have to build the road that they can be able to travel peacefully without getting assassinated in the road or ambushed in the road. So I think in my leadership, we're going to be able to open up very uh, much returns uh, home, and we're going to do that as a campaign. And we can involve the internet community. We can involve the IOM and so many other organizations that are willing to return these people. But for doing that also, you will need to make sure that Kenya government and the Kenya people need to take credit on this. Without them, these people would not be survived. They would be dead a long time ago because the government is going after them. They are not saving that country. And I think the Kenya government needs to understand the reason why a lot of them are running here is because they are not safe. Uh, most of the political leaders and the generals who are actually seeking uh, shelter in Kenya is because they are not safe in that country. That's why they are seeking asylum here. They are here because for, if they don't do it, they will be killed and they die. And that's why they are here for their own safety. But when it's going to be a new leadership thing will change. And that's why I'm calling uh, all these uh, folks in opposition to come together and make sure that uh, we are going to bring the change and the system will settle all these uh, injustices that take place in the country. Question for I come from the largest tribe in the country. Uh, most of you may know what they call Denka. Uh, I'm from the Denka. Salfakirim service from the Denka. Uh, so we believe that uh, the few of South Sudan actually right now, uh, they are dying under a leadership supposed to be the Denka man. Uh, but the Denka is killing his own Denka, unfortunately, <laughs> the way the system is. Uh, and he's killing other tribes as well. So he declared the war against his own citizen. Uh, I believe that uh, the Dinka it was a guiding, God giving population uh, numbers in the country to stand for the, the champion for the minority, to champion for the minority tribes. We should not be able to oppress the minority tribe because we are majority. We should be able to safeguard the minority tribes and protect them and give them hope. That's what, minority, that's what the majority is. A majority that actually oppress the minority, God would not give them any success to have that kind of number. And that's why you're seeing them all over. The majority of actually live in Kenya now, they are Dinka, and they run away from their own son. They are not well, they are not other equator. They are just Dinka running away from their own Dinka. That tells you the system has fell, and that man is not doing anything. So being from that tribes, we believe that we are going to call all the South Sudanese ethnic to come together in a unified way to build our country, and also to make sure that justice have to be there, and a kind of bill have to be also pursued and to make sure that this is not going to happen again for the next generation. Uh, we've been doing this in 2017. Uh, we called for election, uh, demand election to be co-host. Salfakir keep changing t the, uh, deadline and time and playing game with Africa Union, playing game with IGATS, and lying to the internet community that the country is not in peace, election cannot be called on time. So that all that uh, manipulation we push election by bribing the parliament to push election to 2018. After 2018, election have been pushed again to 2020, 2022, 2020. So he's playing game with the citizens of Sudan. So this, elect, this campaign has been started for a long time ago. We've been pushing and calling the Tanai community to call election on time because at least if Sal Fakir really uh, a leader that had been elected by these people, okay, he could be re-elected, but at least call election. He refused to call election. And the IGAD and African Union refused also to put pressure on him and say, you know, you have to call election. I know we've been negotiating with you for too long. Now the time for you to at least to, to go for election. He refused not to go to election. So I think I'm here just to remind you of what I said again before. Kenya is a very peaceful country. Attract the investors. Attract the internet community to come in. Attract people of South Sudan to run it and hide and, and, and be safe and not getting killed. So that is a big credit for you and, and the government of this country and the people of this country. So for me, being here at the first step before I go to other neighbor African countries like Uganda and uh, Ethiopia and maybe South Sudan, is to know that your country is a safer place and people admire this country so much and that's why we are here. And to know that also 
uh, your nation could have differences, but they always work together and move forward for the bigger goal. And the goal is the unity and the peace of the country of Kenya. Sudan have been at war for a long time. And most of you in the Africa community never given a full story about the war. Uh, and that is so sad. I don't blame the Kenyan, I don't blame the African Union. I blame the leaders of South Sudan for not giving a full story about the South Sudan. Uh, South Sudan was at war because we have been denied our right being African. We want to live up our Africanism, that we need to be fraught Africans. And the people that we share the country with deny our identity. They want us to be Arabs, and they want us to be a member of the Arab League, not the African Union of Egat. That was the fight. Also, our culture as Africans, indigenous people have been denied. Uh, our language, the Africa dialect, have been denied. If you go to Sudan, you have to speak in Arabic as a South Sudanese, or otherwise you have no chance to graduate. That was a part of the challenge in Sudan, and that's why we had the war. Another part of it also being a Muslim or being a Christian, say it was actually a war between Christian and, uh, and a Christian and, uh, and Islam, that the dominance in the leadership on the top want the country to be Arab and Islamic state, not to be Africa. And, the, the, and this, in, uh, this government, led by Bashir and people before Bashir, uh, actually organized the Islamic militant to go and raid the African villages, where my village was raided. Uh, I was kidnapped. I was taken to slavery uh, in, eight, in 1987 uh, with more than 700 kids. They walk as bare feet without shoes to Western Darfur, where we end up being sold to the market. I uh, walked to the uh, Arab wealthy man. Our young girl had been uh, distributed, uh, being sexual abused, raped, and getting forced marriages with the slave masters. Uh, three years later, I was able to manage to escape uh, because I was uh, being disciplined by the master, uh, used the, put the chain in my leg, uh, a lot of stuff. Uh, after that, I became a good boy, disciplined, listened to my master. Then give me a little bit of assignment to go and take the cows and give them water. Where I was able to see a train that I, and I catch the train was come from the West Darfur to Khartoum, and I catch the train. I went to Khartoum. I hand up in refugees came in a Catholic charity uh, called Kamboni. Then from there also we find another challenge. The first time I was able to speak Arabic it was when I was taken to Catholic charity because South Sudan don't speak Arabic. The majority of them live in villages. They don't know what Arabic is. We live in a country that we don't know that we were Sudanese. We just know we are Dinka, that's all. No more than that. So when I got to Khartoum in 1990, I heard out that Khartoum also had been led by Sam Bin Laden, a man who actually attacked Nairobi in 1998 here, uh, U.S. Embassy. And he kicked out the organization of Catholic Charity. Uh, we need to run again and went to Egypt. From Egypt, I got asylum to the United States. In uh, 1999, I went to the United States of America. My case was I, I was being a slave. Uh, my family uh, lost my family when I was young. My dad died when I was three months, and my mom also was beat uh, to paralyze, and she died later. My brother was a slave. My brother's wife was a slave. My old relative, they were a slave. So for me, telling that story to the entire community gave me asylum to go to the United States. After I went to the U.S., I was sponsored by uh, Catholic Charity and also went to school there. Like John mentioned, I was very much graduate from political science, homeland security. And then I realized I have to go home and I don't want what happened to me to happen to another next generation in South Sudan. Uh, unfortunately, the African don't know slavery still exists in Sudan. The slavery is still going on in Sudan right now. I have, we have about 35,000. The slave was still now in the market in Sudan. They never been self accused they don't talk about it. The government does not talk about it. They're hiding this. These have been hiding agenda. And that's why it's a part of my role as a former slave to go back and love with these people. The value, the leadership just yes, have to be a values leadership. We want to make sure that we need to go back to our you see the reason why we fought in the first place, we will try to define our nationalism. And that is the Africanism nationalism, and that unite us as indigenous people of South Sudan, and also embrace our culture, embrace our way of life. There is nothing wrong with it. It's just because we need that, and people of South Sudan need that. 
And for me being here, I think that we need to present a values, a way that we need to be a society that peaceful, uh, not a violent society, have been described by the international community in many ways, uh, by, uh, misrepresented by self Akir or maybe Riyadh Masha, whatever these individuals. We want to make sure that the South Sudan are the most peaceful society in the Horn of Africa and also in the world. To do that, you need to have a leadership that be, that happy, believe in happiness, believe in togetherness, believe in peace, and also South Sudanese need right now a leader can deliver. Leader that say that I'm gonna build a school, it will build a school. A leader that say that I'm gonna bring hospital, it's gonna bring hospital. A leader that's gonna say I'm gonna bring the food, it's gonna bring the food. These are not lacking around. There's no leader in South can do that right now. So that's why my leadership, I have to present those values and promises on time and make sure that I'm, I would deliver. And freedom have to be demand. If I did not run away as a slave, I wouldn't be here. I demand my freedom by running away. <laughs> That's why I'm here. So being a citizen, have been oppressed by a system that is so authoritarian, worse than Yedamin I mean in Uganda, you have to stand up for your rights. <laughs> and I think South Sudan are ready right now to do this. And they, uh, that's why I'm here. A lot of them are in contact with me in Kenya, in Uganda. All, all of them are blowing my phone right now. Uh, they are excited I'm here. And they cannot wait to see me. Uh, to tell you that the South Sudan are willing to bring the shame. And I think that uh, the time has come and this is the right time. And I want the Kenyan uh, also to support the South Sudanese in many ways. Not only just for them to live in Kenya, but also for them to gain their freedom. I think that will be a good, big credit, it will be a good story for the Kenyan people. Because Kenya have a good heart and I think they can do this.